everyone. My name is Elza Matthew. I'm a software engineer at Intel, working at the intersection of cloud-native technologies and packet processing software libraries. I've been at Intel for about six years now. Previously, I've also worked on Ethernet networking driver software design and development for various OSs. I would also like to introduce the primary author of the talk, who could not make it in person, but is happy to answer any follow-up questions offline. Manoj is a software architect in data plane networking team in the Network and Edge group at Intel. He is currently working on building and optimizing cloud-native services using network data plane technologies and has over 20 years industry experience in multiple technology domains. Today's talk is about the work we did integrating cloud-native data plane, CNDP, which is a collection of user space libraries for accelerating packet processing for cloud applications with OMEC BES UPF. OMEC BES UPF is the Open Networking Foundation's <coughs> OMEC UPF project, which implements a 4G, 5G user plane function based on the 3GPP control and user plane separation architecture. We will talk about the traffic flow through the UPF pipeline in a Docker environment, the Kubernetes integration with the AFXDP plugins for Kubernetes, and the Aether in a box deployment model. We will also describe platform technologies for GTPU packet steering and how this works along with offload feature in the NIC to redirect GTPU packets directly to user space via AFXDP. So the agenda for today's talk is divided into three sections. First will be on CNDP, where we'll start off with the motivation for CNDP, go into a little bit of detail about what CNDP is and the various components that comprise it. We will also talk about the CNDP Kubernetes deployment model and the AFXDP plugins for Kubernetes. In the next section, we will talk about BES, OMEC UPF, and how CNDP integrates with each of those projects. Then we will move into the Kubernetes integration, the Aether in a box integration, and then wrap up with a short demo. Moving into the first section, CNDP, a cloud native data plane. We've had great success with DPDK and VPP. So why another development kit? Primary reasons are sometimes data planes are not designed to operate in a hybrid, private, or public cloud environment. This is because of hardware requirements such as CPU, memory, and networking interface. To better align with the cloud native environments and principles, we need a data plane that doesn't have these restrictions. That is the origin of the CNDP concept. We took the key concepts from DPDK to achieve the performance requirements. CNDP was created to enable cloud-native developers to use AFXDP and other interfaces in a simple way while providing better performance as compared to standard Linux networking surface interfaces. CNDP does not replace DPDK. DPDK still provides the highest performance for packet processing, DPDK implements user space drivers, bypassing kernel drivers, and that is one of the reasons why it achieves the highest performance for packet processing. DPDK also implements um, a framework for initializing and setting up platform resources, scanning PCI bus, allocating memory via huge pages, etc. However, in contrast to DPDK, CNDP does not have custom drivers. Instead, it expects the kernel drivers to implement AFXDP, preferably in zero copy mode. Since there are no PCI drivers, there's no PCI bus scanning, and we do not require physically contiguous and pin memory. This simplifies deployment for cloud native applications while gaining the performance benefits provided by AFXDP. CNDP fits the void between flexibility and performance we target 10x performance over Linux applications using sockets and also clean integration into various cloud tool chains as a requirement. DPDK and VPP are the best solutions for undisputed performance. And 
CNDP fits that void between flexibility and performance. So what is CNDP? It is a collection of user space libraries for accelerating packet processing for cloud applications. It aims to provide better performance than that of standard networking socket interfaces. The IO layer is primarily built on AFXDP. This is an interface that delivers packets straight to the user space, bypassing the kernel networking stack. CNDP also provides ways to expose metrics and telemetry with examples to deploy network services on Kubernetes. CNDP consumers include cloud network function developers as well as consumers. Developers who create applications based on CNDP will be able to abstract away the low-level I.O. that CNDP takes care of and focus on their application. The consumers who consume the applications developed by the CNF developer can take advantage of CNDP's deployment models for their applications using Kubernetes. CNDP follows a set of cloud-native principles. Functionality, usability, interoperability, portability, performance, observability, and security. And here's how. On functionality, CNDP provides a framework that en enables cloud-native developers full control of their application. Usability. CNDP enables the developer to create applications by providing APIs that abstract the complexities of the underlying system. Interoperability. Since CNDP is built on top of AFXDP, it's possible to move the application across environment from public to private to hybrid cloud wherever AFXDP is supported. CNDP provides a common API to access network interfaces. With regards to performance, it takes advantage of platform technologies wherever it is available. And if there are no specific hardware technologies, then you can always fall back to the software when acceleration is unavailable. Observability and security is another key aspect that CNDP focuses on. Metrics are exposed via Prometheus agents and security is also a first-class citizen, and we'll come to that in the next slide. This diagram showcases the various components that comprise CNDP. You have the core libraries, the application libraries. You also have the cloud-native stack, which is a IPv4 UDP TCP networking stack designed using the CNDP graph node library. We also have language bindings with Go and Rust, and there are a couple of Ansible playbooks that you can use to help with setting up your system. This is a diagram of the CNDP and Kubernetes deployment model, which shows the integration of CNDP with the AFXDP plugins for Kubernetes. This is a device plugin and CNI. The benefits of this integration is twofold, security and scalability. Security. In order to run the CNDP application in a secure, unprivileged pod, there were two aspects of AFXDP socket creation that needed to be done by the AFXDP device plugin and CNI. That is the loading of the EVPF program on the net dev and updating the AFXSK map with the file descriptor. Scalability. In addition to helping CNDP run in a secure, unprivileged pod, AFXD device plugins help the scalability by supporting subfunctions API. Since AFXDP socket is only associated with a port and QID tuple, a single net depth comprising of multiple subfunctions can be used by multiple pods instead of moving the entire interface into the pod. ETH tool filters are programmed by the CNI, and traffic metrics are exported by the sidecar container running Prometheus. Switching gears now, let's move on to the next section, where we'll talk about BES. What is BES? BES is a software switch. It's designed to be extensible and highly performant. 
It is the first networking switch that was software switch designed to support NFV in, tradition, in addition to traditional virtual networking tasks. There are four components of BES, BES-D, the ports, the modules, and BES-Kettle. BES-CTL is the controller for BES-D, and it offers a command line interface, allowing an administrator uh, to configure which ports are connected to which modules and so on. BES-D is the daemon, as the name suggests, and it's the core software switch. Ports are the interfaces where packets may enter or exit BESD, and modules are pieces of code that allow BESD to inspect and modify the packets. For integration of CNDP with BES, we started with the CNDP BES port, which enables us to send and receive packets to and from the networking interface using AFXDP. We added support for this along with the existing DPDK port. So that's about BES. Now, what is OMEC UPF? OMEC UPF is a project under the Open Networking Foundation, which is implementing a user plane function. It uh, make use, makes use of the PFCP protocol for the communication between um, SMF, in the case of 5G, and the UPF. It's widely used as part of the Aether platform in conjunction with the SD core, mobile core control plane. There are two parts to the UPF in OMAC UPF. That is the PFCP agent and the data path. The PFCP agent is a Go-based implementation and uh, it is used to interact with the mobile core control plane. The PFCP agent implements data path plugins that translate PFCP messages to data path specific configurations. And there are two data path plugins currently in the project. One is the BES plugin, and one is the UP4 plugin. The one that we are interested for our CNDP integration is the BES plugin. Since we added the CNDP port to BES-D, we integrate with the BES plugin in OMEC UPF. We already talked about BES. UP4 is an implementation leveraging the P4 programmable switches to realize a hardware-based data path. The combination of PFCP agent and UP4 is referred to as P4 UPF, while BES UPF denotes the combination of PFCP and the BES data path. Support for new data paths can be provided by implementing new plugins. CNDP integration with BES for UPF provides flexibility in terms of deployment and horizontal scalability. So now that we talked about CNDP, BES, OMEC UPF, and how CNDP integrates with them, let's talk about how we tested this. So this is how our development and test setup looks like. We have two systems. System 1 runs the UPF pipeline, and System 2 runs the traffic generator. The two systems are connected back to back with Intel Ethernet controller E810C for QSFP. For generating traffic, we are using DPDK package gen with best scripts to generate the GTP traffic. These scripts are already a part of the OMEC UPF repo and we were reusing that. It simulates both uplink and downlink data traffic from multiple UEs to the app server. In our current setup, we used uh, Intel Ethernet controller EA10C for QSFP with DDP profile. That's the dynamic device personalization for telecom, telecommunication workloads, GTPU enabled. We used the out of tree driver and set TC filter rules on access and core networking interfaces to do GTPU RSS based on the inner UE IP address in the encapsulated GTPU packet. Currently, we are setting the TC filter rules using a bash script. With the TC filter rules, we use application device queues to create queue groups, and only GTPU packets are redirected to the required queues. The default XDP program is loaded on the NetDev, and AFXDP sockets are attached to the required queues, which handles 
the GTPU packets. So that is about the test sy system that we used to um, test the integration out. Now let's talk about the Kubernetes integration. So when we initially started out, we used the scripts, Docker setup script, which is in the OMAC UPF repo. And once we had that working and had confidence that worked, we moved on to the Kubernetes integration aspect of it. And this is how we went about it. The OMEC project has a UPF deployments, YAML, and we took that and we modified it to use the local CNDP plus best UPF images. The AFXDP plugins for Kubernetes that we talked about in the CNDP deployment model diagram were also deployed with the CNDP best UPF application. The AFXDP CNI was used to create the network attachment definition for the access and the core networking interfaces. And that is about the Kubernetes integration aspect. Now, I'd also like to introduce Aether in a Box and how we integrated the CNDP best UPF with Aether in a Box. Aether is ONF's 5G LG LTE connected edge platform as a service. It's the first open source 5G platform for enabling enterprise digital transformation. It provides mobile connectivity and edge cloud services for distributed enterprise networks as a cloud-managed offering. It's an open source platform optimized for multiple multi-cloud de deployments and simultaneous support for wireless connectivity over various spectrum. Aether in a box, on the other hand, it provides an easy way to deploy Aether's SD core and other components and then run basic steps to validate the installation. So it can be set up with either a 4G or a 5G SD core. In our case, we did it with the 5G SD core, and it can be done with or without the interactive GUI for examining and changing the configuration known as the ROC. If the ROC is not deployed, you can also use a simple tool called SIM app um, to configure the required state. So the values.yaml that was provided to the Helm charts from the Aether in a Box repo was modified to use the local images. The UPF mode was set to CNDP, and we tested it with the 5G SD core. The G node B sim performs the registration plus the UE initiated PDU session establishment and sends the user data packets. So now we will see a demo of the Aether in a Box integration with CNDP. First, we are doing a make reset 5G test. So in that, the Helm charts get deleted, the release is uninstalled, and we wait for all the pods to terminate. If you notice, we have a pod for AMF, we have a pod for uh, SMF and UPF0 and so on. So our changes are in the UPF0 pod, and uh, which has the CNDP plus best UPF image. And then uh, when we do a make 5G test, the Helm charts get downloaded, and then um, the simulation starts running. Helm charts are the primary method of installing the SD core resources, and Aether in a box provides a great deal of flexibility when it comes to which Helm chart versions you want to install. There are local definition of charts, then uh, latest charts that you can get from the tip of master, also specified versions of charts for deploying a specific Aether release. So Aether in a box can be run on bare metal machine or a VM. In this case, we're running it on a bare metal and we're using Ubuntu 18.04. The data I face uh, specified there is a dummy networking interface and uh, it uses Mac VLAN networks called core and axis. And the behavior of the UPF is to forward packets between its axis to the core interface while at the same time removing and adding GTP encapsulation on the axis side. Upstream packets uh, arriving on the axis side from the UE uh, have their GTP headers removed and the raw IP packets are forwarded to the core interface. So now in the simulation, uh, the G node B sim is doing the registration plus the UE initiated PDU session establishment 
and it sends the user data packets. Ether in a box will now uh, print out uh, a lot of logs for uh, showing what exactly is happening at each stage of the simulation. And here we are testing um, it with five profiles. And um, for each profile, like five packets are sent. So a total of 25 packets traverse the pipeline. And at the end of the simulation, we will see that uh, whether the simulation passed or failed. So now that the simulation is over, we can look at the best UPF pipeline, which ran while the simulation was happening. And that is on the next slide. So this is the best UPF pipeline, and it's graph-based. And you can see the packets traversing the pipeline going through each of the nodes in the graph. And uh, the output view mode is set to the total packets received. So that's the demo. To summarize, CNDP is a recently open source cloud native solution for accelerating packet processing applications. The integration of CNDP with OMEC UPF highlights some of the achievable improvements with 5G deployments. I have a slide in here which has some useful links, the links to the GitHub repos for each of the projects mentioned in the slide deck as well as links to the blog posts, webinars, and technology guides. That's all I had. Thank you.